Now, more than 1,000 activists are expected to march to the union buildings tomorrow, demanding justice and an end to the violence, threats and intimidation aimed at activists and whistleblowers. The activists say the killings and intimidations, more so in areas where mining and minerals expansion and prospecting is taking place, continues unabated. Human rights defenders, campaigner at Groundwork, Robbie Makhalaka, joins us now. A very good evening to you. Thank you so much for your time, Robbie. I believe you're preparing to march to the union buildings tomorrow to deliver a memorandum to the president, the ministers of police and justice, and of course their respective portfolio committee chairs. What are your concerns? Hello, how are you? Um, I hope you could hear me. I can. Um, hear you. Okay, that's perfect. Yes, uh, tomorrow's action is uh, activity is a national uh, gathering. Um, by human rights defenders or coalition for human rights defenders uh, consisting of 81 non-governmental organizations and community-based organizations and, and other networks that are affected and also concerned about the act of intimidation and killing of activists and frontline defenders protecting their human rights. So the gathering is about calling for a protection that should come from the government um, of human rights defenders in our country against all the intimidations and killings that are happening. And of course, when we start talking about government, we are referring to the president of the country, mm -hmm. uh, the minister of justice, and the relevant department, that is the, the Department of, of, of South African Police Services. As you call for protection, um I would imagine you are hosting and uh, coming together like this to hand over a memorandum because you've had enough. What incidents have led to this point where you're saying you need protection and it needs to be done urgently? There, there are a couple of incidents that led to this. Um, but it's one is, I mean, I think everyone, most people know about the following incidents where Bajwa Khadir was killed in his own house in front of his seven-year-old uh, son. And that was in 2016 February. And ever since then, nothing has happened. No one has been arrested. So the, 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 I mean, the, the trauma in the family hasn't been, um, hasn't been dealt with or addressed. And there's no fighting of closure. And also, the issue of mom signaling jealousy. The woman was killed by five men in her own house in front of her 13-year-old nephew. Um, who was killed for 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 for, for standing up against the Sun Keller coal mine, which was expanding into an area that hasn't been sorted. The killers are still at large, and now recently, recently, um, we we are having a situation where in one community, in one community, that is in Melmoth, where the Jindal coal mine, the Jindal iron ore mine, sorry not coal mine. Um, it's, 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 it's aiming to or planning to uh, start mining iron in that area. And within this one year, there's been two activists who were killed. One was in the in, 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 uh, April 30th, and the other one was on the 14th of July this year. Mm. So standing up against the mine. Let alone talking about our fellow person, John Dano, who had 25 of the activists killed or members killed. And only four or five of them have seen justice, and the rest have never seen justice. Mm -hmm. So now we are seeing this attitude, or rather, the response from the government where there's no response, where there's no action taken, where there's no voice coming from the, our leaders saying and discouraging this. So now we decided let's come together and work with our government to, to address these issues and to protect its own citizens because. It is the responsibility of the government to protect its own citizens. Mm. And yet, these human rights defenders are doing the very same constitutionally binding responsibility of the government to protect its own citizens. So, as I they deserve protection and recognition for the contribution that they make in terms of promoting and protecting human rights. Mm. The common thread um, is around the killings and intimidations happening more where mining and mineral expansion is happening. Talk to us about uh, what may be leading 
to the increase in killings and intimidation around this space? What is the bone of contention? I think for your breaking a bit, your mind seems to be very far. Mm -hmm. If you can repeat the question for me. Just, just to explain, yes. Robbie, about uh, some of the reasons behind why we're seeing an increase in these killings, because the common thread speaks to killings happening in mining and minerals expansion projects and those areas. Yeah. You know, you know the problem, <clears throat> the main problem is that, um, remember that these mining projects are in rural areas. They don't happen in towns, they don't happen in the suburbs. And when they happen in those areas, people are relocated. And some of those people are not even well equipped or educated about their rights. But yet they see what is wrong. They see when their graves are relocated without consent because they are connected, there's a connect, an ancestral connection with their graves. That's where they, they do their ancestral prayers. And when those graves are relocated in a proper way, problems that the conflict that when the houses are relocated without a fair compensation or without proper uh, discussion or agreement then conflict starts mm. so the mining companies are taking advantage of the fact that these are poor people they're getting poor people can build or maybe they can act back or fight back but yet they know what is right and what is wrong so they fight back based on that and when they fight back the other level of the problem is that, or level of the problem is that, they are being seen as anti-development people, or people that are fighting against development, while in fact they are fighting for their genuine rights, to say, let's talk, to say, respect us, to say, speak to us, let's, let's sit down and agree on a fair amount of compensation. Please listen to us and hear us. So, mm. and then in that case, when they report cases to the police, when they're being threatened, when they report to the cases to police, when the mine is actually imposing itself or to the department, nothing is done. So they end up, of course, fighting there by protesting and to say, which is a cry for help, to say, please listen to us. Mm -hmm. Let's talk. So what we are seeing is that poor people and rich people don't have equal rights. So the poor rich people, their right is right. And the poor people, their right is actually less. Mm. So we, we have seen that kind of a trend. I think that's the, that's the common cause behind all this that I've seen. I think there's a lot that we can talk about, but those are the main points that I can talk about. Mm. Robbie, thank you so much for speaking to us this evening. Wishing you all the best. And of course, we will be keeping a very close eye on how that uh, uh, march progresses tomorrow as uh, more than a thousand activists are expected to march to the union buildings demanding justice and an end to the violence, threats, intimidation aimed at activists and whistleblowers. That was uh, Robbie Mokhalaka, who is Human Rights Defenders campaigner at Groundwork.